I think when it comes to the point that the people who decide what you do on your holiday, you know, you're looking for an excursion, yeah. or we'll go to the wine factory, we'll go to the beach, we'll go to Zoomerine, or maybe we won't. I think that's a real tilting point now. Yeah, I think they've had a huge amount of pressure from charities like Peter for the last year. And there's been so many petitions out there and so many people have signed saying they don't want to support, you know, places like SeaWorld. And this does show that um, people are definitely becoming more aware of how cruel these places really are. Good zoos, and I would class SeaWorlds and Laura Park, who both have killer whales, are good zoos. They, they generally do get very high ratings if they're inspected. Um, they do contribute to conservation research and education. And what we're learning from animals in human care is very important. The only thing I would say to John is, you just know to look at it, it's not right. And we're talking about a scale mm. here, Lucy. We're yeah. talking about a massive creature and not a massive Intelligent area. creatures that are literally having psychological issues because they are so distressed in um, confinement. Animals, for instance, a lot of their behaviour, the reason why they travel vast oceans is because they have to in the wild to find food. Mm. If you feed animals, they will they will come to you. It's one of the reasons why we don't when we go yeah. out onto the seas and oceans because we don't want to disrupt the natural mm -hmm. behaviour. And, and in fact, what we think is distressing behaviour, these are animals that would, would, would otherwise not have the lives they have in the wild. Um, I think everyone wants freedom. We want freedom. All animals really want freedom. And um, in terms But they of... would argue it's freedom from starvation. It's freedom from a yeah, disease. There's definitely it's freedom from things that the wild yeah, have to have. There's been deterioration yeah. in food due to overfishing. Um, and I would say that the money that these companies are spending, you know, gaining from whatever, mm. they could be investing more into conservation and education and, mm. and trying to increase the welfare of the lives in the wild rather than bringing them into confinement really for personal gain and for entertainment reasons yeah. reasons as a business at the end well, of the day. Well from personal gain to personal decisions now Charlotte um, you know I have four children and over the years I've been to all these places and increasingly when they were young and they enjoyed it and they liked it and increasingly as the years went on I question is this right and I don't think if I ever had grandchildren I think it's over for me. Mm. Now, you have young Ella Rose. Ella's not much, she three? Yeah, she's three. three. You're faced, and I know you, you're into animal welfare. What, where do you stand in this? Entertainment, harmless fun, animal welfare, as John says, or not? Where do you stand in this? I think it's definitely the forefront for me, considering the animal welfare side of things. I would much rather take her out, you know, when she's old enough, go on a safari, see them out in the wild, see them in their natural habitat. And then actually you're showing the future generations how important these yeah. animals are to make sure so that they do Charlotte thinks there's, there's, there's a halfway house, Lucy. Yeah. Do you mm. think there's no, a halfway house? I don't, house? because I think that a lot of these places are breeding purely so they can use the animals for their, own, right. for their John, business. No, John, I don't yeah. necessarily agree with that because uh, learning about breeding biology from animals is very important. It has direct relationships to what we know about them in the wild. So therefore, is your argument that that information helps the Indeed. Animal. I mean, and the idea that zoos like Laura Park or SeaWorlds don't contribute to animal welfare or animal conservation in the wild is actually wrong. They spend a lot of money on research. Uh, below 1% of their profits is, goes towards cons conservation. Below 1%. I think your, your um, argument there is basically you're looking at the, just the pure amount of money involved that they do contribute quite a great deal of money. John, what would you say to this? We've, we've been running a Twitter poll um, today and we asked, should uh, these white life centres be boycotted? Look at this. This is how it's turned out uh, this morning. Two thirds of people saying, yes, yes, that's the way the tide seems to be. Yes, and I think the problem with that is that uh, is an inherent problem that has been with SeaWorld and indeed London Zoo many years ago, that they weren't explaining to people exactly what they do behind the scenes. Well, I've been to SeaWorld and um, Thomas Cook's poll, actually, their, their research they did with their customers was 95% of people said they were uncomfortable yeah. with it. I've been to SeaWorld and they do explain it. They make a very big deal and they really stress how much they do. I, I think just think people have moved people on are now. still they have, not happy. They people are uncomfortable. And... and um, explain themselves because at the end of the day, they are making so much money. SeaWorld is a huge business. And, you know, if they don't answer some of people's questions and try and sort of please people in some way, then they're going to lose out on business. So I do think it's all for show, I'm afraid. So SeaWorld say millions of UK guests have visited our parks, seen firsthand the incredible care. 
uh, that all the animals have and have learned about how we are protecting and saving species in the wild. Uh, we have ended breeding for orcas. However, the current animals in our care will be with us for many years to come. So the animals will be there, but the question is, will you? That's the thing, mm -hmm. folks. Thank you very much indeed. Okay.